All right, welcome to our tips newsletter. This is tip number two. We're going to be going over scraping Word documents. So what you want to do is you'll want to, um, assuming that you have everything set up, you're going to hit the Git pool for the our tips newsletter GitHub directory. And that's going to load in your new our tips right here. And we'll be primarily working out of this directory today. So what we have for us are two files here. The first one is the business science dot dot X file. So this is going to be the word document we're working out of. I'm just going to click on it real quick. It opens up. It looks something like this. It's just a normal document. It's got a title to it. It has some information in here. What I'm primarily interested in is this table that it has here. It's got a graph here as well, but this is the data that really drives everything. So I want, what I want to do is I want to automate extracting this table out and I want to do some analysis on that table. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Okay. So how we're we going to do it. We've got a script file here and I'm opened it up. I'm also opening up the outline so you can follow along. And what we'll be doing is going down through it. So we're scraping a MS Word document. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you sign up for my newsletter right here um, because you'll get these every, every week. Um, all right, so we're going to load in some libraries. The main library today is the officer package, and this is what's going to allow us to read in Word documents. Um, we're also going to use the janitor library. I'll show you where we use that in a minute. Um, the GG text library, and then we're going to load li the tidyverse library as well. The first thing we do from the officer package is use the read underscore doc X function, and we just provide it the path to our file. So that's going to read in this file. So when we do that, we'll have in our environment over here, a doc, it's a list of nine. And what we can do is we can use this doc X or doc, yeah, doc X summary function on this doc file and extract out the data from it. I'm going to store that as content under, underscore tibble. If I check that content out, this is all the information that's in that file. So it's got 22 lines. It's got a paragraph heading one, which is business science. And if I check out that doc, that file, I can see that that's business science right here. And the next line is learn data science for business in six months or less. And I can see that that is the next piece right here. So it's got all of my information in here. What I'm primarily interested in is the table cells though. So not the paragraph text. I want the tape, anything with a table cell. So what I'm going to do next is filter down the content table. And when I run these two lines of code by hitting control and enter, now I have the table content table stored. And this is my table. It's got all the cells from that table. Um, and how it's set up is it's got headers. So the headers are true where there is a header in your table. So if we take a look at the table, um, we see that there's a header right here, course students and lesson lectures completed. And then we've got some course numbers. We have the, the total counts of students and the total counts of lectures completed. And note that there's a comma in here, so we're going to have to parse this. Okay, so back to the, um, the, the table contents. So what I want to do is I want to extract out the text for the headers. So anywhere that there is, is header true, I want to extract these rows. Um, so next, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my table content tibble. I'm going to filter down where is header equals true. And when I do that, I just get these three cells or these three rows here from that previous tibble. And I've got courses, students, and lectures completed. And I'm going to pull that text out of there. So control enter. Now I've got courses, students, lectures completed, and those are going to be the names for my table. So I'm going to store those as table header. And now I have that saved right up here as a character of length three vector course students and lectures completed. Next, we're going to work on the rest of the contents. So we're first going to take the table contents table, looks something like this, and we're going to filter where it is not header. So where this is false, where you want all of these items. So when I do that, I have just the contents and I can see that there's uh, text here for 101, 102, 201, 202A, and these are four of the courses that are in the business science curriculum. Um, I'm going to select the text row ID and cell ID because that's 
all of the columns that I need. So this is the text. Uh, so think of this as the values that go into our table, the row ID and the cell ID. And all we need to do is just pivot this now. Um, so we're going to use this function called pivot wider names from the cell ID and values from the text column. And then the row IDs are going to be are going to stay the same. When we do that, we now have the row IDs that are in the correct format. So I've got the first column is my courses. The second column is my um, my student numbers. And then the third column is the lessons that have been completed. So we're going to then drop off the row ID column, control and enter. So now I just have these three columns. Um, one of the issues that I see here is these are all character. And I need this, this to be a value. I need this to be a numeric value as well. And this one has a comma in it. So there's an easy way to do that. It's with this function called parse number. And all, all it does is it takes in a vector and it extracts out um, any of the commas, anything that might be um, uh, preventing numbers from, from being parsed. So uh, what I do is I run mutate across dot calls negative one. So I just told it don't do this column. Negative one means skip the first column and then apply this parse number to these two columns here. So when I do that, these are now numeric and we can see that the commas have been removed from this column here. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do here is we need to set the names to the table header that we've set that we've uh, previously extracted. So now uh, when I do set names table header, I've got course students and lectures completed. Um, I want to make this all lowercase just because it's uh, easier. So I'm using the janitor package clean names. And now we have course students and lectures completed. The space here has been removed. It's now all lowercase. So there, those names have been cleaned. And then I want to add one more column called activity ratio, which is going to be just the ratio of lectures completed to number of students in the course. And what this will do is show me whether or not these um, uh, there's a high activity or a low activity in the course. So I'm going to save these results as a lecture analysis tibble, control enter. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use ggplot and I'm going to take my results and I'm going to make a visualization out of it. So um, this is just ggplot code. I teach it in my 101 course, I'm hitting control and enter. And now that produces a visualization that looks like this. And, and we've just successfully extracted out our information, this table that came from our docx. We extracted it out and we successfully scraped it and cleaned it up. And then we converted it into a nice visualization here that shows me that woohoo! Course number 201 has a high ratio. I can see that the activity ratio is super high in that course. Um, so there might be something going on there. Students must be loving something. And then any courses that maybe have a lower ratio, I might want to check out and see what's going on. So cool. Those are the insights. Um, if you like what you saw here, definitely sign up for the newsletter. Um, I also, if you want to go further, um, I offer an eight week course called DS4B 101. It's R for business analysis, and you can learn more by checking out this URL here, and it'll take you right to the course. Um, it's perfect for beginners, no experience required. If you like this video, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday free R tips newsletter. You can just click this uh, link here and it'll send you here, put your email address in, and every Tuesday you'll get these videos, you'll get the code, and you'll get the tutorial right in your inbox.